This Sunday's Gospel reading recalls the final hours of the life and ministry of John the Baptist. The passage ends with a vivid description of his murder inside a prison cell. Then we read, the soldier brought his head on a platter. It doesn't make easy reading. Apart from the brutal nature of John's death, I'm also struck by the response of King Herod. We read, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man and protected him. There was something about John's character which bothered Herod so much so that he tried to keep him safe. We later learn that Herod was deeply grieved at the request of the girl to behead John. Herod knew that John was a holy man. But what do we mean by holiness? What did Herod see in John? Holiness is God's own character. It's who God is. And this means that Herod saw something of God in John's life and it challenged him. When I started ministry training, my friends came over one day to visit me and they found this lying on my desk and they laughed their heads off. It's written by Judy Hurst, struggling to be holy. She writes about her own struggle with holiness as she lived in Durham, surrounded by the saints of Northumberland. She talks here about how she assumed holiness was only for people who lived by strict discipline or for individuals who could spend weeks in silence. She assumed holiness was only for those who could be devout, serene, peaceful, controlled and contained. Maybe you can relate to her struggle. Maybe you think of a bar that you can't quite reach as if holiness is beyond you, not really for everyday people. Or maybe the word holiness brings up negative connotations of someone being holier than thou, polishing their own halo for everybody else to see. But what if we've misunderstood holiness? What if it's less about mastering our own efforts to behave better, to try harder, and more about being able to entrust ourselves to the God who loves us? The truth is, we can't make ourselves holy, however hard we try. Maybe that's why John the Baptist prayed, less of me, Lord, more of you. Speaking about monastic life, Brother Luigi Gioia said, when the new young monks first arrive, they don't look holy and they're not holy. The middle-aged monks who have been in the monastery a while, well, they know they're not holy, but they do look holy. And the old monks who have been there ages, now they don't look holy, but they are holy. If holiness isn't about what we look like, but who we're becoming, what are the signs of holiness in everyday people like you and me? People who inhabit holiness tend to show characteristics like compassion, humility, wisdom, integrity. Holiness is often evident in people who have suffered deeply themselves, but have prayerfully resisted bitterness. They're often non-judgmental, selfless. They're often at peace with themselves and because of this, they're able to laugh at themselves as well. But there's also another side to holiness. Holy people can also be incredibly challenging because they will often oppose injustices and seek out truth. This means that it at times feels uncomfortable to be around them. 
if you think about Herod again, he was challenged to be around John the Baptist because of John's holiness. The list I've given isn't exhaustive, but these characteristics, they all show the character of Christ. From compassion shown to those in need, to the turning of the tables in the temple, Jesus has revealed to us the holiness of God. I help people in this diocese explore their calling and I'm constantly saying that we are all called as disciples of Jesus to use our gifts for the building of God's kingdom. As I help people explore their vocation, we often think together about formation. Formation is about allowing ourselves to be acted upon by the God who loves us. The clay can't form itself into something attractive, but the potter can. So when we place the whole of our lives, both the strong and the damaged parts of ourselves into the hands of God, then he can form us into something unique and beautiful. Real change and transformation happens when we open ourselves to God by receiving his gift of unconditional love and forgiveness. When we bring before God the whole of who we are, the highs, the lows, the joys, the disappointments, the successes and the failures, it's then and only then that we allow ourselves to be shaped and moulded by the Holy Spirit. We allow ourselves to be formed by God and then we become our whole best selves. When we welcome Christ into the clutter of our lives, spending time in his presence, that's when we grow in Christ-like character. When we come to God as we are, that's when the good stuff happens. That's when God can help us to become more fully ourselves. I wonder sometimes if the real struggle with holiness is believing that God loves us enough to help us to change and grow. The good news is that we have a generous God who wants to spend time with us. God's love is real. And the more that we come to believe that, the more we will be able to risk bringing everything that we are before God and allowing God to form and shape and mould us to become more like him. John the Baptist was called by God to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus. He declared to the people, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths before him. The path to holiness is a long one, and yes, it's a struggle. But we're invited to offer all that we are, our whole lives afresh into the potter's hands. And if we risk this, we can be confident that God will form and shape us into people who bring life and blessing to the world around us and even at times make things a bit uncomfortable. May it be so. Amen.